honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the Paladino Live Network. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Pal Dino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podman, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Audible, Podbean, Stitcher, Double Twist, and basically your favorite uh, podcasting app. Thank you once and always for downloading and listening to the show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. Finally, a little sunlight here in the Twin Cities. As anybody around this area, probably Iowa, surrounding states, can relate to how freaking cloudy and dreary it's been. And uh, finally, a little sunlight. Oh, it feels good, but it's right in my eyes because of the time of year. But with that said, the sun's shining with the Timberwolves, generally speaking, a week where the Timberwolves wind up winning three out of four games. But as some of us might say, there's always a hater mixed in. Yeah, there was a crappy Washington Wizards game mixed in. I don't know what's with the Wolves and the Washington Wizards. Half of the time, we just struggle with those guys. Uh, in fact, historically, we have. Usually over there, and then even here sometimes, and it happened again. But three out of four ain't bad. Not quite meatloaf. It's two out of three ain't bad. And the Wolves will wrap up the season against the Chicago Bulls. Don't be surprised if players are sat down in that game. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of the the main cogs, like the, uh, there's like zero chance D'Angelo Russell will play, Carl Anthony Towns, we'll see, maybe, maybe not, probably shouldn't, and Anthony Edwards, because the Timberwolves are locked in the seventh seed, that's kind of the theme of today's show, I was almost planning on holding off on the show, because there's just one, you know, quote-unquote meaningless game, but might as well, since we know who we're going to play, it's going to be the Los Angeles Clippers, plus I was also afraid a little bit that, uh, my car would be, uh, coming out of the shop today, but I doubt it, uh, because, boy, they're short-staffed everywhere all the time because of wonderful things and all that. It's just wonderful, and people that are so ambitious that like to show up to work, yeah, like one out of five people like these days seems like, or when they do show up, they're still lazy. Anyhow, next conversation, (laughs) that's just how that goes, I'm not bitter about that at all. Uh, but no, I mean, the Wolves scored a lot of points this week, but they also gave up a lot. And that's kind of a concern going in, especially considering the Los Angeles Clippers have a guy named Chris Paul. So we'll review the games, even though it's just kind of like we were kind of stuck at seven anyway. I'll review the games, but in a lot of ways, it's kind of going to be a theme of uh, previewing this potential postseason going forward. Hopefully the Wolves can get to that seventh seed, wrap things up quickly against the Clippers, even though Paul George is a danger and a threat. So I'll have to wait and see. Uh, well, entertaining battle between the Wolves and the Denver Nuggets. This was no April Fools for the Minnesota Timberwolves last Friday. See what I did there? It, was, it, it, it wasn't April Fools, see? Wasn't that funny? It wasn't funny? Okay, fine. At least we won. Uh, yes, Carl Anthony Towns had a pretty solid game. Gotten a little, well, got a little frustrated with some of the foul calls, but that's how it goes. Nikola Jokic might win back-to-back MVPs. He got to five fouls in the game. I could see him getting... Yeah, it's Carl Anthony Towns. He he gets upset after every foul call there is, and most players do. Torian Prince and Malik Beasley combined for 31 points off the bench. Very entertaining. But Nikola Jokic, Jokic, Mr. Joker, whatever his name is, obviously again, he's the kind of guy you're going to foul a lot because he's got some swift, uh, he's got some nice moves, and of course a very powerful player. There's a reason why he's a league MVP. It's a crying shame that the Denver Nuggets are just kind of okay. They have some nice highlight-style players. And, of course, it doesn't help when you have Jamal Murray out for the season with the ACL last fall. Last spring is when the injury happened a whole calendar year ago. But, again, that's the NBA. Why? I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. Uh, This is a game where the Timberwolves showed their depth, though, in a lot of ways. Because guys like Anthony Edwards, three of 15, uh, six of 15, pardon me, he has, he has a couple better games here coming up. Just, you know, especially one, you know, it's, there's one game where he did pretty well. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Um, Darrell Anthony Towns, of course, did lead the way. He, he usually does against Denver, but I remember in the past, he'd have some real rough games to get the Jokic, but Carl Anthony Towns, it's a different year for him. Uh, different maturity level, more confidence and such, going up against some of these tough players. These tough big men, like, you know, like in the past, there was guys like, uh, you know, Marcus Gasol and such, which used to give Carl hell. 
But, yeah, you could just see the frustration with Carl at times, getting fouls called on him all the time or non-fouls called coming the other way, um, this and that. <clears throat> But no, Wolves depth definitely showed in this game. I mean, let me just, just, just listen to this. Six of nine from the floor for Torian Prince, 16 points. Malik Beasley, four of 10, which was all three point attempts, so whatever. 15, that's awesome. And he got to the line and made all three of them, as did Torian Prince. Jordan McLaughlin made all three of his threes. All three of them, and he only missed one two pointer, which is funny. Jordan McLaughlin made three three pointers. That doesn't happen that often. Nas Reed, 3 of 5. 2 of 4 from downtown, 9 points. So, obviously, very nice there. Only a 9-man rotation against this Denver club. Um, interesting there. Jalen Noel didn't play a lick in this game, but I suppose it's a matchup situation. Jake Lehman, well, we, we know what's going on there. Josh Akogi, well, he just didn't play against Denver. Um, nice 9-man rotation. The Wolves did really well for the number 1 offense in the NBA. The number 1 offense in the NBA. And uh, D'Angelo Russell, also very solid performance. Getting to the free throw line. Attempting 11 and making 10. That's pretty cool. Doing a good job getting to the basket before his bilateral um, hamstring soreness would take over. Right. Um, load management, you mean? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, where are we? What's next? Bilateral toe soreness? Bilateral wrist soreness? I don't know. It's sore. Yeah, we, we get it. It's great and all that. Um, basically, you're tired or something, or it's a little bit sore. I mean, heck, I've had sore hamstrings before playing in the past. Not that I would know anything about that anymore these days. But, well, I don't know. It's nice to have a <laughs> relatively full lineup here, doing a good job. Of course, no Jade McDaniels yet, but he would return this week and look pretty good, to be quite fair. Wolves end up winning 136-130 to 130 against Denver. A very impressive win in Denver. I didn't think the Wolves were going to pull this off, but... Well, I figured the Wolves would beat the Wizards, so I guess it's just what it is. And I figured the Wolves would win 46 games. So, well, we're at 46 now, so we'll see how things turn out versus the Chicago Bulls. What really surprises me, with how well the Bulls had been playing earlier this season, and, you know, the Timberwolves, obviously, were just kind of getting going. We're getting back in the playoff picture again, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty darn cool, and this time it doesn't feel fake. It doesn't feel like this is as high, this is the ceiling. It Last time we made the playoffs with Jimmy Budhead, Andrew, Andrew, take the night off Wiggins. Carl complain every time he gets to the basket towns. <laughs> or I'm scared of Jimmy Butler for some reason, whatever you want to call him at the, at the time. Now, I don't feel Carl, about Carl Anthony Towns nearly as negatively as I did at, the, at that time. It, it, just, it just wasn't there. There was no vibe with that team. It felt right away, this is the best we're going to do. We're in win-now mode, and we're going to get beaten in five games as an eighth seed. How exciting. That's our ceiling. This team has not reached its ceiling. This team has not reached its ceiling, especially considering earlier in the season, we weren't that great, and, you know, things just kept building and building as the season progressed. Next year, I think the Timberwolves could very much get into the 50-win range, hopefully past that. As I remember, that was the plateau in the Flip Saunders era. Kevin Garnett, Terrell Brandon, Walter Zerbiak. Old Walter. Wally Zerbiak. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was fun. Um, 46 wins, but long story longer, the Chicago Bulls have only 45 wins. The Wolves actually have more wins than the Bulls. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. And that's in the Eastern Conference. Yes, I know the Milwaukee Bucks won the NBA title last year. I know uh, teams like Brooklyn can be dangerous, Cleveland, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, and the Sixers, of course. But, I mean, Phoenix? Memphis, Golden State, ugh, that ugh, I don't want to think about them. Even Utah is a freaking thorn in your side all the time. Teams like that, Dallas can be a pain in the ass. They have a less, they have less wins than the Wolves. Okay, I that's kind of impressive on the Wolves side, and at the same time, the Bulls. What the heck happened over there? I don't know. Um, especially when you have a guy who might be the MVP of the league this year, uh, in Demar Derozan. So I don't know what happened there. I couldn't tell you. It's funny. I don't know, they're just struggling, I guess, and I suppose injuries, but still. But, yeah, the Wolves have had injuries. <laughs> yeah. It's like D'Angelo Russell misses every other game. Uh, you know, <laughs> we lost Jaden McDaniels for a significant amount of time. And don't tell me Jaden McDaniels ain't valuable for this club. So he damn well is, and I'm thanking God that he's back. That is a wonderful thing <laughs> going forward. Nice little win versus the Denver Nuggets. Nice big win versus the Denver Nuggets. But again, giving up 130 points. I mean, the defense just isn't really there. It really isn't. Transition defense, half-court defense, 
transition defense especially. It seemed like guys just run all over us. Guys like K.J. Martin was like one of the better dunks of the year. Um, of course, yeah, we had uh, Aaron Gordon dunk that the whole world had to watch 50 times in a row, a reverse. Yes, it was a good play. We know, but we know. I'm kind of tired of Aaron Gordon for some reason. Probably because those dunk contests drove me nuts. Uh, Josh Akogi, who <laughs> was just those back and forth dunk contests with uh, a certain guy who used to be on the Wolves, Zach Levine. Um, Ten-man rotation in this one. Nas Reed got the least minutes. That's kind of weird, but I guess so. I mean, I guess. Houston's kind of, I, I don't know who the hell they are. That's why Josh Akogi, Jalen Noel in the game. Wolves again showing nice, solid depth in this game. And the Edwards went off for 33. 33 points to lead the Wolves. 4 of 12 from downtown. Again, getting a little trigger happy, as D'Angelo Russell likes to do on a regular basis. 4 of 11 in his case. Uh, but the transition defense in this one, it just felt like Houston kind of could do whatever they wanted. It just luckily, we were a little better. That's kind of the theme of this game, to be quite fair. I like There's like nobody on players, it's, it felt like. It was almost no body contact except when it was too late. Like when there is body contact, it's too late. Like guys just... You know, these backdoor, you know, backdoor plays. I mean, good for them. Good for Houston making some nice plays. But, I mean, it's like nobody's watching the guy cut to the hoop. Hello, you know. Again, good for you on a nice play. But, come on, watch. Jeez, watch. Maybe watch the passing lane a little bit there. Watch the guy cutting. It, it's just, I, I don't know. Like Sam Mitchell used to say, it feels like we have ADD or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was an ADD type situation. Sure was. Jared Vanderbilt attempted one shot in the game, but at least he made it, of course, close to the basket, because that's Jared Vanderbilt. He hasn't been rebounding like he was earlier in the year. You're not seeing the Rodman-esque Vanderbilt anymore. You're seeing more of a good, a, a really nice defender who doesn't rebound as good as he did earlier. I, I guess that's what you're seeing. He's got to be the best defender on the team, right? Like way up there. Him and, of course, uh, uh, our good friend Patrick Beverly, but uh, you know those are the two best defenders, no doubt. That's why I think they're like two of my favorite players on the team. I love guys that can play some defense. Josh Akogi again. Speaking of defense, getting some action, wound up with 11 points in the game. And you know what's you know what I like the most about Josh Akogi's game? It's not the the energy. It's not the defense. It's not the fact he got two steals and, and we got got a hand in there on one as well. He didn't attempt a single three. Good job, Josh, because he not he can't shoot threes. Just don't bother, dude. Just don't bother. McLaughlin, 3 of 4 again. 75% again. Awesome. Awesome, Jordan. And it was only threes attempted. It's interesting. So Jordan McLaughlin becoming a little bit, little bit more of an outside threat lately. Because for the longest time, I never saw Jordan McLaughlin as a guy who really had any offense whatsoever. Just a nice ball handler. Hang, hang you know, could kind of hang in there and such. I mean, his 3 point percentage, even after this week, still under 31%. <laughs> But, again, this this past week was a pretty nice performance, to be quite frank, from downtown. Hopefully this is a trend for Jordan McLaughlin. It'll keep him in the league for many years. No doubt. No doubt if he can, you know, be consistent from downtown suddenly. I'm not expecting 75% on a regular basis because <laughs> that's insane. But, heck, if he could get up to 40 45%, that'd be really awesome. Like, really freaking awesome. Jalen Noel, 10 points off the bench. A lot better than having to sit there in purgatory. Now you end watch everybody else play. God, is there, is there anything worse than that? Especially when you know you're a valuable piece. That happened to me in the past. When you know you're a valuable piece at the very least, you're not a starter. <laughs> yeah, and you're sitting watching. It's like, come on. <laughs> so I know there's matchups, but at the same time, ugh, I think Jalen Noel's value is a little higher, in my humble opinion. The Prince was adequate, but he got in massive foul trouble, and the Wolves' defense sucked in this game. Carl Anthony Towns, five fouls again. Back-to-back -back games with five fouls for Carl Anthony Towns, which would help contribute to more and more bad defense and such, especially when you're at the fifth foul, fourth foul and such. You're going to avoid contact at all costs, which means guys will drive right at you and say bye-bye, adios, bye-bye, or get you fouled out, one of the two. It's a great situation to be in. Great. Just wonderful. That's why Carl had no blocks in the game. But the Wolves won, though. We, we won. We beat one of the worst teams in the league. And they scored a lot of points against us. In fact, 132. That's great. 139, 132. Ugh, and they had 40 points in the fourth quarter. We just got sloppy, got lazy, and said, ah, we're bored. You know, let us just come back in the game, and we're going to let you do some highlight plays on us as well. I don't know. It was kind of lame. But at least the Wolves won. And then there's the next game. I guess the Washington Wizards, where we were just kind of in that mood the whole way. We gave up the 132, and this time we weren't really, our offense wasn't really clicking like it was earlier in the season. 
or earlier in the season, a couple of days earlier. Yeah, the offense wasn't clicking at all. Not nearly like before. Bulls wound up with 14 threes. Woohoo, that's great. <laughs> As a lot of people were enjoying beef and cheddars this past week, I'm sure. So Wolves were continuing to make threes. Jalen Noel was continuing to do that in the short stint he got out there. Josh Akogi and Mc McKinley Wright the fourth. Congratulations in some minutes, at least. I think McKinley Wright can play in the NBA, but unfortunately in his case, he's kind of stuck in his current position. And Jordan McLaughlin looks more and more like a guy who deserves to be in the NBA for a while, for quite a while, as a nice backup at the very least. I like him more than I liked Chris Smith, and Chris Smith started making threes uh, after a while. Um, Chris Smith was a nice little role player, backup point guard back in the early early to mid-90s. I remember him quite well. I'd say mostly early 90s. I believe he wore number three, right, before Marbury. <sighs> Straight off of my memory there. Um, again, Jordan McLaughlin, yeah, or excuse me, Jared Vanderbilt, only six rebounds, but he ran into a little bit of foul trouble, and I don't know, he, he hasn't been the same since earlier in the season with that quad injury, so... I don't know, maybe it never fully healed. And some sometimes those type of injuries take months and months and months. It's, it's a bummer. Uh, it was just an ugly overall night. Ugly, ugly night. Who was the best player on the floor in this game? I mean, obviously it was Anthony Edwards for sure against Houston. That was fun, that 33-point night. It was absolutely great, but nobody really shot well in this game. Carl Anthony Towns, 2 of 8 from downtown. You know, overall 10 of 24. That's not a good game at all from Carl. It's balls. <laughs> That's balls. Uh, at least he didn't get five fouls in the game, but probably wasn't making a whole lot of contact because nobody really was. Houston was just kind of running all over us in this game, up and down the floor, kind of doing a whole lot what they wanted. A whole lot like the Houston game. And then we'll move forward to the San Antonio Spurs game for the sake of time and for the sake of sanity because who can talk about losing to the Wizards the way we did at home for too much longer. A 127-121 win, the 46th victory of the season, where the Wolves built a pretty nice lead, and Anthony Edwards was doing a little bit of everything. Attacking the basket, pulling up threes. Attacking the basket, pulling up threes. Looked a little bit like Kobe Bryant. That's right. Looked a little bit like the Black Mamba out there. He, he did. And hopefully Vince Germano isn't pissed off at me for doing that comparison. In this game, he looked like Kobe Bryant. He did. Uh, Kobe Bryant with those pull-up threes that he would do, and of course a lot of those little nifty moves to the basket. Maybe not quite as uh, sexy, <laughs> so to speak. And then Anthony got a little bit trigger-happy late in the game, and who can blame him at the end of the day when you're like hanging on for a possible 50-point game? When you had 47, you're trying to hit that three to get to 50, and it just wasn't going in. And that's why Anthony Edwards' field goal percentage went down the tubes because of a because uh, of a crappy fourth quarter. There, I'll stay off the S word for the moment. Crappy fourth quarter um, by the Wolves in general. Again, I mean, the Spurs obviously getting free possessions when Anthony Edwards is clanging threes, trying to get to big 5-0 like David Robinson did against us many, 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 many years ago. He had a, he had a three-pointer back when centers didn't shoot threes hardly ever uh, to get to his 50-point mark against the Wolves years ago. My brother took it as they just kind of, he was just kind of rubbing it in because it was at the buzzer when the Spurs were blowing us out way back in the day. So that wasn't too cool. But good for uh, David Robinson, I suppose. Um, Anthony Edwards, unable to uh, do a David Robinson in that sense, but still very dominant in a lot of ways, like David did to us at the time. Also on about eight assists, some nice, nice passes to, to cutting players, like Carl Anthony Towns and such, and hanging around by the basket. And in McDaniels, guys like that, one up with 10 points. A couple of three-pointers made early in that first quarter by Jaden McDaniels. It was nice to see, you know, nice to see that nice, smooth, silky stroke uh, when he has those corner threes. Uh, he's, he's, he's good at him. Uh, nice uh, job getting the ball over to Jaden McDaniels to hit that shot. He made both of his three-point attempts, and Jaden, again, solid return. Looks, looks good. He looks good. Looks very good. Uh, he's rebounding the ball for as much as he's going to in a 20-minute stint. So it is what it is. Nas Reed didn't play well. I don't know why Reed struggled as much as he did. It was kind of strange. Torian Prince stunk 0 for 3. Daniel Jalen Noel didn't shoot exactly good either. But it was just Anthony Edwards. Pretty much Jane McDaniels was the only player off the bench that had a good game, including Jordan McLaughlin. Didn't have his best game either. But again, 2 of 4 from downtown, though. What am I talking about? Keep it up, Jordan. Keep it up. Good week. Good week, Jordan McLaughlin. You just might get the... Uh, you just might get the lone wolf. Okay, that's not nice. That's not nice to say. It's just teasing him. <laughs> it's not going to happen. 
It's not going to happen. Not in, a, not in a week when Anthony Edwards is 33 and 49. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns doesn't play particularly well. And uh, D'Angelo Russell is back to being the other guy. He's, he's back to being uh, Mr. Hyde. Uh, I liked when he was Dr. Jekyll. It was nice when he was clutch. Or maybe that's Mr. Hyde. I don't know. Whichever one it is. Mr. Hyde was obviously the evil one. So I guess the evil one, like the bad one for the Wolves, would be Mr. Hyde. So we'll leave it as that. Um, he's back to being Mr. Hyde again. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hyde as in I'm hiding from the court. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't. I can't. I'm sore. I'm sore. I'm, I'm not playing. Leave me alone. But maybe it's for the best now as the Wolves are locked into the seventh seed. Zero percent chance he plays. I would recommend guys like Carl and Anthony. That's it. You know, that's it. You got your 49. Now let your knees heal a little bit. Certainly looks a lot healthier this week than Anthony Edwards has for quite a while. That's what feels really, 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 really good about Anthony Edwards this week. Because for the longest time, it felt like, man, he is straining. He's struggling out there. You could tell something just isn't right. And that's why Anthony Edwards wasn't playing as well with those, those uh, the knee issues. But and he's the kind of guy you have to pry off the court. Where D'Angelo Russell, hey, D'Angelo, that hangnail look doesn't look so good. Okay, okay, I'll sit out. No problem. Where Anthony Edwards, it's like, dude, dude, your, your knee, dude, you're bleeding to death, or your your your, your knee is like almost completely immobilized. Sit, sit down. No, man, I got this, dude. Sit down. See, it's like you know, you, you always have different personalities on a roster like this, but um, it's just kind of funny. Carl probably more on the Anthony Edwards side. I don't think he wants to sit out either, but he's he sat out a few games last year, didn't he? <laughs> and of course, he had some injuries that were not not to be helped, unfortunately. With that said, though, um, again, crabby defense down the stretch, and of course, just literally giving the ball back to the Spurs and after clanging threes, trying to get to big 5-0 was a big reason why the Spurs beat the Wolves pretty handily in that fourth quarter and got back in the game, but luckily, Minnesota hung on, and Anthony Edwards at least made the free throws that helped seal the deal for the 49 anyway, not the 50, and uh, wrap up the game. Thank you, Lord, for that. <laughs> at the end of the day, Patrick Beverly, again, nice eight assist game. Nice to see him back healthy. And at least he'll be back next year. And we'll see. Hopefully Patrick Beverly remains a part of this organization for the next two decades. I'd be very happy. Please, Patrick, stick around. Hopefully that 22 is a big number. Sticking around with the Wolves for 22 more years, huh? <laughs> That'd be amazing. Would love to have you around, Patrick, if, if uh, I had any say on the matter. Can't imagine a whole lot of Wolves fans and NBA fans disagreeing with that possibility. 23 pointers made. Enjoy your beef and cheddars on Friday. What do you think of that, huh? Friday Friday lunch, Friday dinner, beef and cheddar. There you go. There you go, depending on what you're doing during the day. Maybe you want something fancier, but unfortunately with my work schedule, fancy a fancy Friday night dinner isn't doesn't isn't gonna happen very often. Maybe a Saturday or Sunday. Maybe. <laughs> with that said, the Lone Wolf Award for this week goes to Carl Anthony Edwards. Okay, I'm just kidding. Anthony Carl, Anthony Edwards Ant is going to be your Lone Wolf Award. A couple of great games. Nobody was that perfect in this in this week, obviously. It wasn't the prettiest week ever, but still 3 and 4 or 3 out of 4 is pretty freaking good. 3 and 1s per se. A crappy game against the Wizards where everybody stunk, to be quite fair. Everybody stunk in that game except uh, Jordan McLaughlin pretty much. So, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Everybody stunk in that game. Jalen Noel was adequate. That's about it. Um, yeah, that's that's about that. The uh, Johnny Flynn Memorial, I guess it's Prince. Terrian Prince did not have a good week. He had a good game against Denver. After that, Terrian Prince kind of disappeared uh, for the most part, and he had a terrible game against the Spurs. Could have could have done better. His defense wasn't good, and he wasn't making anything. It just wasn't a good game for Terrian Prince. So it, it's a gentle one, though. It wasn't like, holy crap, Terrian, you're the worst player on the team. I can't wait till you're gone. No, I'd like the Wolves to re-sign Torian Prince to like a one or two year uh, extension. Hopefully cheaper than what he's making, but because if he wants to stay at his current salary, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen. What was he making? Like 15, 16? I don't think he's a 15, 16 million dollar guy. But I suppose I suppose you could be a ninth man, tenth man today and make make at least 12. <laughs> Remember when all of us were pissed off about Terrell Brandon's 12 million dollar a year contract? Remember that? It's just, it's it's a killer. It's killing us. And then you had Garnett making twice as much anyway, so it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, Terrell Brandon, though, yeah, I mean, obviously he was a bit on the soft side. A bit on the soft side. He'd completely changed from the guy that was uh, the Cleveland uh, Cavaliers point guard at that stage with all those ankle injuries. 
Uh, he used to drive to the basket with relentless assault. But um, let's get back to where we need to be. Again, Anthony Edwards, Lone Wolf, Johnny Flynn Memorial, Torian Prince. With that said, we'll take a quick break. We'll talk about the Bulls game a little bit and then preview the upcoming big uh, play-in tournament nonsense against the Los Angeles Clippers. back here on Timberwolves Explosion. Timberwolves. Timberwolves versus Bulls. Timberwolves versus Mavericks. No. <laughs> NBA Jam back in the day on the Sega Genesis, which was the preferred version in my opinion because that's how I roll. The Chicago Bulls. Marv Albert. Well, okay, sorry. Michael Jordan. Now it's DeMar DeRozan and guys like that. The uh, Chicago Bulls have lost three games in a row, which is partially why the Wolves caught up. That, that'll help, and the Wolves win three out of four. The Chicago Bulls did beat the Wizards, though, on March 29th, 107-94. Beat the Los Angeles Clippers, 135-130. to 130. Then lost to the Heat, the Heatians. These are all home games for the Bullets, the Bullettes, at least right now. 127-109. Lost to Milwaukee, 127-106. That sounds kind of familiar. And then 117-94 uh, to the Celts. The Celts are pretty damn good. They're the hard Celts, or I don't know. They're really good. Boston Celtics are really good. Um, Bulls, not so much at the moment. I think the Celtics would sweep the Bulls or beat them in five in a playoff series right now. And if, we'll see what happens, how things shape up. Chicago is a sixth seed, so they'll wind up playing the... Boston Celtics. Okay, that's if it's set in stone. I'm not sure if that is completely set in stone. Yeah, they're dead. They're done. They're not going to beat the uh, the Bucks or the, the Celtics, depending on which team, or even Philly. Bulls are done. Well, sorry, sorry to say. Bulls have the 12th best offense in the NBA, 28th in rebounding. Field goal percentage is third. Free throw percentage, why am I even caring? Second, but that's good. It's good. Uh, Three-point percentage, fourth. That's pretty good. Wolves is only 12th there in that category. 17th and assists. Why do I? Yeah, 5th and turnovers, protecting the ball very nicely, and 6th and assist to turnover ratio. Wolves are 11th in that one, thanks to Jordan McLaughlin, but 22nd in turnovers, thanks to, you know, Anthony Edwards at times. Uh, sorry, I know I'm trying, I'm being careful at times. 3rd uh, in steals, thanks to Anthony Edwards. 3rd <laughs> in blocks, thanks to guys like, you know, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of nice shot blockers on this roster, which makes me smile. Obviously, Carl's a guy that's going to get blocks. Um, but you have Jaden McDaniels, Jordan Vanderbilt, and even Pat Bev blocking shots. It's pretty cool. The Bulls beat the Wolves. Bulls beat the Wolves. About six weeks ago, I'm just kind of going off memory because I won't show the damn date. 134-122. It just, you just knew the Wolves weren't going to win. It probably wasn't even that long ago. I think it was in March. I think so, right? Right? Oh, Feb 11. That is quite a while. Yeah, it's about two, two months. Yep. Wow, time flies, man. DeMar DeRozan is a hell of a player. He's an MVP candidate. In fact, I'd consider him way at the top with uh, Nikola Jokic. Jokic, Jokic. Five rebounds, five assists to go with his 28 points a game. He's even making over 35% from downtown for a guy that never shoots threes. He attempts less than two a game, which is interesting. 50.5% from the floor. He gets to the free throw line. And actually, he's a better free throw shooter than the former shooting guard of the Bulls many years ago, who was the best player ever, in my opinion. Zach Levine with, uh, averaging about 24 and a half, and he's a very good three-point shooter when he feels like it. <laughs> Damn good field goal percentage for a shooting guard because he's capable of attacking to the basket and making some great plays. He actually has a slightly, slightly higher field goal percentage than the center, Vucevic, which is insanely impressive. That or Vucevic is not impressive. I don't know. It is what it is. Kobe White still hanging around. Uh, Lonzo Ball has been out forever. It just is what it is there. It is what it is. It's too bad. Too bad, Lonzo, with the knee injury. Yep, remember that back in January. Patrick Beverly, right ankle, early April. But he's back playing again. Patrick Beverly's had all kinds of little little things, nicks and knacks. That's what happens, though, when you get wear and tear and you've been through a lot throughout your career and you play a very physical game. Who's going to play in this game? That's the question. I mean, um, I don't know. who Who is going to play in this game? 
I kind of, I don't know. I think the Bulls win this one. I think the Bulls win this one. I think the Bulls are kind of like, duh. Uh, I think a lot of the other yeah, young guys like Jane McDaniels, Jordan Vanderbilt, got, I just called him Jordan Vanderbilt, Jordan McLaughlin, Jared Vanderbilt, guys like that are going to play well, even with guys out. Because I don't imagine a lot of, I can't imagine a lot of the big time players are going to be playing in this game. Um, Bulls are locked into a regular seed in the Eastern Conference, so they don't have to worry about uh, screwing around with the... I thought I had it up. Uh, where did it go? They're not going to have to worry about screwing around in the uh, Eastern Conference uh, play-in situation. I can't believe Brooklyn's in a play-in play -in situation. That's weird. What's up, Brooklyn? What's what's up? How, how do they wind up there? Brooklyn! Yeah, that's what happens when you don't let your starting point guard play because you're so much... Yeah, I don't know. I'll leave that where it is. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Seriously, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure the sad part is I bet you like 75% of my listeners right now are like shaking their heads at me, not at the Brooklyn Nets or the, the city of New York, whatever. But uh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I kind of think the Wolves win this one. The Bulls feel like they're just going in, you know, they're just kind of backsliding into this playoff series. And the, the Wolves had a nice week. I think there's a nice vibe around the Wolves right now. This may go completely the opposite direction. And both teams finish with 46 wins on the season. Oh, no, the Wolves or the Bulls have one more game against Charlotte. They might get 46 wins anyway. So, especially if they beat Charlotte, maybe they sit a lot of players versus the Wolves. And the Wolves are going to sit players for sure. Um, last thing you need is some stupid ankle injury or something. You know, or God knows what. You know, in the fourth quarter or whenever in a game that's not going to move you up or down one way or another. But I, I got a strange feeling. I think the Wolves get a 47th win. So instead of 46, it'll be 47 wins for the Wolves. Final score of something along the likes of um, one, and it is in the target center, 125, maybe no, something lower probably because, you know, the situation. Something like one. 116, that's what I'm seeing right now in my little crystal ball. 116 to like 110. Jane McDaniels, 25. Wolves win the game. Jane McDaniels leads the Wolves in scoring and does not get hurt. No. Don't, nobody gets hurt in this game. Please stay off. <laughs> Just don't get hurt, please. Don't get hurt. <laughs> the Wolves win, though. Jane McDaniels. So then we'll talk a little bit about the L.A. Clippers, Los Angeles Clippers. It's it's a little scary. Uh, they're 40 and 40. Definitely an inferior record, but that's because, like, you know, uh, no Kawhi Leonard at all because it's the same reason. Same reason other guys are out. They're injured and they don't play in this league. If they're injured, they just don't play. They're done. <laughs> it's too bad. Amir Coffey definitely emerged much more this year, getting a role in the off uh, getting a role on the team and into the rotation is where I'm trying to go. Where last year, he, you know, he was barely there. It was kind of a bummer. Um, nice to see Amir Coffey becoming a bigger, bigger piece for the L.A. Clippers, averaging eight and a half a game, which is nice, nice, nice job in over 22 minutes. That's cool. Almost 23 minutes a game. Serge Ibaka, he's actually getting more minutes than Serge Ibaka now, member of the Clippers. I think he got traded, though, didn't he? Or did he get traded to the Clippers? Yep, he got traded to the Bucks. That's what happened. That's what I thought. I was like, no, he's, he's not on the Clippers anymore. <laughs> Serge Ibaka has moved around so much I just don't know anymore. He's been on, like, everybody. Everybody but the Wolves, pretty much. He's, he won a championship with Toronto. He lost with the Warrior, uh, the Thunder, excuse me. He never played with the Warriors. Let's let's look at Serge Ibaka's career. I, I'm just curious now. He's been all over the place. Yeah, OKC for quite a while. Yeah, he was on Orlando for a minute, wasn't he? Then he was in Toronto for a few years there. Nice little stint and got a ring, which is awesome. Good for him. I guess he hasn't traveled that much. Sorry, I thought he was on Cleveland. I swear he was on Cleveland. Whoa, I, my memory's messed up. It must be someone else, or maybe there's something to this Mandela effect thing. There, there just might be, huh? Yeah. <laughs> In my reality, he was on the Cavs. He was. He actually played up with the Wolves for half a season. Okay, sorry. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's weird. Well, he's on the Bucks now, and maybe he'll get another ring. Who knows? I kind of think the Bucks are a. Are a one-hit wonder, though, when it comes to championships. They'll be good forever, but one-hit wonder, though. Again, these stats need to be reflected as no Paul George. 
no Paul George for an extended period. 23rd in points, 21 in rebounds, 23rd in field goal percentage. You know all those are going to be higher, except maybe the rebounds. Three-point percentage, third. That's probably about right. Clippers are really, really, really good three-point shooting team, even without Paul George. Block shots, 10th. Steals, 15th. Assist to turnover, 20th. Interesting. Yeah, so there you go. Paul George went healthy, though. 25 points, and he's been a Wolves killer forever. Uh, three-point percentage, not that great. Not that great. Under 35%. So it's not that great. Reggie Jackson can kill you. He's not the best shooter in the world, but he is a, a pain in the ass to deal with. He's really not that good of a shooter, but he's a headache. He, he can drive you crazy. He can drive to the basket and get things done. Terrence Mann, I believe he was on Miami. Um, is Covington on the Clippers? I think he is, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yep, he got traded from Portland to the Clippers. Because, yeah, there were a lot of trades. The trade deadline in the NBA is pretty entertaining at times. And all these familiar names move around all over the place. Zubak, yep. He was a valuable guy, particularly earlier in the season. He's dropped off a little bit. Started out the year pretty well. It's decent. <sighs> Can the Wolves win this game? I really hope so. I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, Clippers, yeah, see, they're way better now, unfortunately. They beat Utah. Impressive win. 121 to 115. They're 4 and 1 in their last five. They lost to the Bulls, interestingly enough. On March 31st, 135, 130. Sounds like an epic battle. What is this? They beat the Bucks, them being the Clippers. 153 to 119. Let's check it out, folks. Let's check it out. Robert Covington with 43 points. Amir Coffey with 32 points. Amir Coffey. Amir Coffey, the Gophers, yeah. Richard Patino, guys like that. Wow, Amir. Where did that come from? <laughs> Rodney Hood. He lives. Rodney Hood. Oh, Mr. Mr. 900 injuries. I'm glad to see him playing again. I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk and make fun of him at all. Good for him. Good for him. Playing only five points, but at least he's playing again. Only only eight, uh, eight guys played in this game, and they wound up with 153 points. Very impressive night with no Paul George. Milwaukee, what are you doing, guys? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Just like, I don't care. We're not going to show up tonight. New Orleans, 150, uh, 119 to 100. These teams may actually tip off against each other at some point if the Wolves are able to beat the uh, Clippers in the first go-round. Paul George is only 15 points. But playing, Paul George playing, 5 of 15 from the floor. It took him 15 shots to get there. Hopefully he's rusty and crappy like that. But uh, let me tell you, I'm not overly confident about that happening. I'm not. Uh, like, see, you know, it's not necessarily the season's on the line because they're in the eighth seed. Even if we beat them, they still play one more time against someone else to uh, get in. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, Paul George, only two games so far. He returned on April the 3rd versus the New Orleans Pelican. Nope, no, no. He played against Wad. Uh, you must have said, he sat out the Bucks game for some reason. He did play in March. That's what I thought, and he was awesome. Must have been kind of, uh, must have kind of sort of re-hurt or re-injured himself a little bit. 34 points against Utah after missing all that time. 34 points. Made half of his shots in that game, including 6 and 9 from downtown. Not so much against Chicago. Very poor field goal percentage. Won up with 22 and then missed a game or two there. And then the 5 of 15 for 15 versus New Orleans. And then against the Phoenix Suns, 19 points. 2 of 6 from downtown. Got to the free throw line quite a bit in that game, but only 19 points. So we'll see. Paul George will play, most likely, <laughs> in the game. I would hope so for the Clippers' sake and for the entertainment value on TNT, which is where the Wolves will be. Rhyme kind of not intended there. <sighs> well, if the Wolves win, we simply move on and play the Memphis Grizzlies. And then Clippers or Clippers would play the winner of the 9-10 uh, matchup. The ten, Whoever loses that is done. The winner survives and try, has a shot at the 8th seed. That's basically what happens. They play the loser of the Wolves and the Clippers. Um, New Orleans and the Spurs. New Orleans and the Spurs. So the Spurs are actually in play in, uh, play in land, which is amazing to think about. The Pelicans. Spurs, Pelicans, Wolves, Clippers. Again, Wolves win, hopefully. Yeah, the winner just moves on to play Memphis. The loser has to uh, survive against the winner of the other two to, for the rights to get beaten four or five games by the future world champion Phoenix Suns, um, which is, yeah, I think so. I think that's probably going to happen. Um, with that said, I'm going to step out in faith and believe the Wolves win the game versus the Los Angeles Clippers. I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm believing. I, I wish this would show it on the schedule. 
so I can get a little look here. I can. Well, what I can do so far is <laughs> the most recent time the Wolves played the Clippers, 122-104 win by the Wolves, but I don't think Paul George played in this game. No, because this was in early January. Paul George went out in late December around Christmas there, unfortunately for him. Jade McDaniels at 18, Prince 17. Cool. Edwards with 28. Anthony Edwards. I do expect Anthony Edwards to have a good game. I think he will have. I think he will lead the Wolves in points in the game with 35. I think Anthony Edwards is a 35-point performance. I think he dazzles against the LA Clippers, but Carl's going to be hanging around at 28, or maybe it'll be vice versa. But I'll stick with Anthony Edwards at the moment. He lead the Wolves in scoring versus the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, definitely an entertaining series between these two at times, but Paul George has certainly hurt the Wolves in the past. No doubt about that. As now I'm able to have the whole thing pulled up. Sorry, this is kind of on the fly here. Again, the most recent game was Jan 3rd. The only game in 2022 against these two teams. Uh, apparently, we did play them Yeah, much earlier in the season. They were all in November. I remember now. It was like Clippers, 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 Clippers. It was crazy. Uh, and the Clippers won all three of those. Yeah. So, a three to one win in the season series. That's what I thought. The Wolves did not get swept, but it didn't go so well. There was kind of a. We played in Los Angeles. No, these are both the Target Center. We lost them both. Ah, that's bull crap. 126, 115. That was a November. The third, Paul George with 32 points. Oof. Paul George and Reggie Jackson. I'm 29. Yuck. <laughs> that sucks. Really appreciate Google for this. Of course, Anthony Edwards, 28 again. Yep, Anthony Edwards leading the Wolves in scoring. Again, Carl with only 18, but 11 rebounds in the game. Try to backtrack a bit. Just want to look at all of these. Why the heck not? Just briefly, because it's an important series. Paul George on November the 5th. 21 points, but did get 10 rebounds and 6 assists. The Wolves lose 104-84. to 84. Oof, not a good night at all. I'm here coffee. Very few minutes in that one. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns led the Wolves in scoring in this one. 20. Malik Beasley with 18. Anthony Edwards with 17 in that one, but a 20-point loss in target center. Yeah, yeah, that's pathetic. Uh, the Wolves did win the preseason game, but... Yeah, it's a preseason game. <laughs> November the 13th in Los Angeles, 129-102. to 102. Oof, yeah, and the Wolves were 4-8, and eight, so I remember how bad the Wolves started off this season. That's what I'm saying, where the Wolves, this team could be a 50-win type of team. And the Edwards did lead the Wolves in scoring with 21. Yeah, when the Wolves again got demolished by 27 points in Crypto.com Arena, or it might have still been Staples at the time. 27 points. Ugh, boy. So, it's not a good matchup. And that's why a lot of people were kind of worried going in this one. I don't want to play Phoenix. And just imagine if we end up not even winning that game for some reason. We fall on our face. But I got to think we would beat the Pelicans or the Spurs if we had to. But then you got to play the Suns. And it's just like the Houston series years ago. Which, that's what I don't like about this play-in. Because the Wolves deserve to be in the seventh seed. They deserve it. And it's interesting to think, too. Again, when I talk about how the Wolves' record, blah, 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 compared to how the starting of the season and all that, and this, this is a 50-win type of a team, 50-win-plus type of a team, just to put this in perspective, January the 3rd, when the Wolves beat the Clippers, beat the Clippers, not lost to the Clippers, 17-20. and 20. So again, think about it. Think about how good the Wolves' record has been in uh, 2022. Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, just 46. I mean, shoot, at that time, we've won how many games since that one? I do the simple math, or if it's that simple. So it'd be what? Uh, my brain is... So when you put the whole thing together, the Timberwolves are actually 29-15 and 15 since then. 29-15 and 15 since beating the Clippers on Jan 3rd. So the last time we played the Clippers, the Wolves are 29-13. and 13. Clippers record right about the same. Because <laughs> they're, yep, 19-19 and 19 at the time, and they're 40-40 and 40 now. So kind of funny. Kind of funny, so you just, yeah, you know, 21 and 21. Interesting, interesting perspective there, but again, no Paul George, so is what it is. Clippers are dangerous with Paul George and not as much without him. And extremely dangerous with Kawhi Leonard if they were all healthy and playing. Maybe they could win an NBA title. But not this year, obviously. Stepping on in faith, the Wolves end up winning the game, and the Clippers have to play whoever. The Pelicans, I'm guessing, but we'll see. I think the Pelicans, who are a little bit, uh, probably a little bit better than the Spurs, get the job done. Wolves should be able to win comfortably versus either Spurs or Pelicans, but I don't know. Come on, guys. Just go out and play like this this good team and get it done at the end of the day. With that said, Wolves win. Wolves win. Anthony Edwards, I already mentioned that, uh, gets the 
It's a 35-point game. The Wolves end up winning. Uh, final score of 129 to 122. Wolves end up winning by seven. And move on to play the Memphis Grizzlies. And we'll talk about that on the next show. Because one way or another, we're going to know who the Wolves are playing or if the Wolves are playing. <laughs> which would be really stupid if the Wolves end up losing both of those. We'll be back for a fan interaction segment, which is a good thing. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion segment number three, Fan Interaction segment. Let's get to the Vigit app, V-I-G-I-T, V-I-G-I-T for referral, Paladino Live. This will be in the show description. It's, uh, well, fantasy betting. It's fantasy betting. It's fun to do, and you can actually become a better better this way, one way or another, or, yeah, use it as a cheat sheet, or just have fun to compete, and then you never lose any money. Social media for sports bettors. You can post about your picks, see what others are saying about games. Vigit Betting League is a month-long betting competition to see who the best sports better is over the course of a month. Free-to-play sportsbook, bet-free coins, win real prizes, betting stats. There's great information available on the Vigit Lakeland movement where the public is betting. Again, this is not real money wagering. It is fantasy betting. And, of course, again, um, the referral, Paladino Live, all one word. It'll be in the show description. I encourage you to jump on the Crypto.com app on Apple or Google, uh, Apple or Android devices. Same with Vigit, of course. Uh, Crypto.com, create some cryptocurrencies. There'll be a link in the show description. Click on that. $25 will be put in your account, and it'll help this show as well. Highly encouraged, and it's fun to trade cryptocurrency. It's similar to the stock market, but the cool part about cryptocurrency is you can trade it any day, any time, no matter what. You could do it at 2 a.m. on Christmas Day. Just uh, anyway, so The stock market's obviously closed on holidays, and it's closed to, uh, you know, it's open at like, what, 8.30 to 3 o'clock every day, at least, yeah, 8.30 to 3 o'clock Central Time, anyway. That's thinking the there's a slight majority of people living in the Midwest listening to the show. Very slight. Love you guys in Australia. Maybe some people in uh, South Dakota, Iowa, places like that, Canada. Who knows, maybe China. Give me a shout-out. Talk to me. T- tweet with me. At TWolvesEX. At TWolvesEX. <clears throat> Timberwolves Explosion still doesn't fit, but, of course, we have double the tweet size as we did years ago. Let's get to that Twitter account, if humanly possible. Thought I had it up. But as usual, I don't, right? <laughs> oh, good. I'm nice to, nice to see some retweets and such. Really appreciate it. Even Sam Gupta followed out of California. Purple Mafia Hall of Famer right there. Uh, Vince Germano out of Australia. Courtside Podcast Finest. Vince Germano out of Melbourne, Australia. Tony Brown and Levi Brown out of New Zealand. Thank you guys so, oh, so, so, so much. Benzo out of the Bronx. Out of the Bronx. Really appreciate you, Benzo. And yes, people out of New York listen to this show. I believe, yeah, he's not the first one that has come up in the past. I believe there were ones in the past. I haven't seen him since, though, unfortunately. It's been a while. But uh, Benzo, awesome. Really appreciate you. <laughs> Seriously, man. Uh, Tanae says, it's really becoming clear the difference between the Wolves and the elite teams in the NBA. Yeah, that's a harsh reality. It is. It It is. Um, yeah, it's, you know, you take care of business against crappy teams, and the Wolves didn't at times, and that's frustrating. So, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that comment at all. I mean, you should be able to take care of crappy teams. And sometimes the awful, uh, the awful, uh, you know, defense is uh, can be quite alarming. You know, screwing around with teams like Houston and such. It's like, come on. And even the Spurs who are far inferior to the Wolves now. Um, I was telling everybody, yeah, see, last week... When I uploaded the show, I realized, oh my god, the sound quality sucks. What the hell happened? So, for some reason, I must have bumped something as I was using the Audacity. That's the recording software I use. Uh, it's the project rate. The hertz was, like, super low. But luckily, you can just adjust it. So, <laughs> it's not permanently stuck there. So, basically, what I had to do is resave it again. Like, resave it as an MP3. Recreate the MP3 file at the, uh, the, the better rate. So, I was like, why does it sound like crap? Because I know a couple other shows... The last month or so, I, th- so, I think Brave the Wild had one like that. Maybe Purple, maybe Timberwolves Explosion had one stuck. See, basically it says, right now it says 44,100, 44,100 hertz. I think it was at like 9,000. So it was like, hey guys, the Timberwolves Explosion, how do you do this? Okay guys, so, yeah, 
Great game by Anthony Edwards. You know, it was horrible. So we don't want that to happen again. So what I did is I got rid of it right away. Some people had probably already downloaded it, thinking that, yeah, there, there's the show. And, well, who could blame you for thinking that? And then it's like, oh, my God, get it out of there. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Then I re-uploaded it again. I recreated the MP3 and put it back up. So just uh, telling you what the heck happened there. Thank you guys for the retweets. Nick Timus out of Aussie retweeted that one, right? I was saying, everyone, make sure you download the second version of the show. The first one was a mistake. It had the wrong audio file. Yeah, it was wrong, all right. It was the right show, but the, yeah, it was terrible audio. That's why it was only 13 megabytes. See, it's just saving space, you know, saving space. Yeah, <laughs> saving space. It's kind of like being the Jacksonville Jaguars of radio. John Maxson, loyal Minnesota sports fan, and says, thank you very much for that. And, of course, uh, Vince... Nope, no, this one wasn't Vince. It was, uh, oh, these are likes. Retweets, yeah, these are the retweets. Losing my mind, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm losing my mind, man. I apologize. So this one actually had more retweets uh, than ever. Yep, it had Benzo, Vince, Nick Timitz, Tanay, Levi, and Derek Velska. Big Brave the Wild Hall of Famer right there. No doubt about it. A big piece of that show getting bigger and better over the last uh, year or so. Thank you. So, uh, two years now. Two years now. Thank you very much, Derek Belsk. I met him sometime in early 2020. Very early 2020, or was it late 19? Uh, really cool. Cool guy. No doubt about it. They retweeted the most recent show. Let's get to today. This is a big one. Dane Moore tweeted, and uh, today had show, uh, was doing the quote tweet deal. Dane Moore tweeted, Chris Finch said post-game that he made a mistake by not playing Jordan McLaughlin enough tonight. Finch said there's no reason to not be playing one of their best players for only 13 minutes. Yeah, he's a good... Jordan McLaughlin has become a heck of a player, hasn't he? Uh, Tanae says, one of my favorite things about Finch is how open he is about he about how, how he feels his rotations are playing out. The Adelman and Tibbs eras were horrible for honest self-evaluations on rotations. Yeah, because I was tweeting back to uh, Tanae of how how did I say it? I didn't, I did respond. Come on. Yeah, quote tweet. That's me. So my quote tweet was, yeah, I really appreciate the open-minded approach rather than it's my way or the highway. Those guys, you know, the, you know, as I was, I just said they, which I basically meant Adelman and Thibs, drove me insane with their stubbornness. Number one, uh, number one question to them is what have they ever actually won? They acted like they were on Phil Jackson's level, including that fraud, Rambus. Yeah, they were frauds. All of those guys were frauds. Well, maybe not so much Adelman and Thibs. Edelman is the least of the fraud, but he was kind of a fraud by the time he got here. Yeah, I, a little bit, a little bit. It felt like he was kind of like half-assing, and especially his last year with the Wolves, total half-ass, and he wouldn't play the rookies at all, which was annoying. Um, a lot of us were like, okay, let Terry, Terry Porter coach, go, go help your wife, you know. I mean, it felt like he wasn't really interested in coaching anymore, which is, I get it, you know, I get it. His wife was sick, and God bless both of them. Um, but no, the open, honest approach is something that's very rare these days. And I like people like that. I try to be the same way at my job about things like that. Um, when I'm in any type of leadership role, I try to be similar that way. Um, I really, 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 really appreciate Chris Finch. I really do. Uh, just, yeah, this guy should be playing that kind of thing. I apologize. This guy should be playing. I think that's really cool and a great, great, uh, great tweet there. Today. That is a huge deal. Huge deal. I probably could have made that a bigger feature on the show, and at least we got it on Fan Interaction where it is. But uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep talking about that more and more and more, and don't be afraid to uh, call in and continue tweeting today out of New Zealand, of course. Out of New Zealand. Yep, of course he's out of New Zealand. He's an awesome friend, and really appreciate you so much today. Levi Brown, his older brother, out of New Zealand, and also a very awesome guy, says, what a game from Edwards tonight, even if the quest for 50 points was a bit rough in the last two minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was like, he started launching the threes and he kept missing. Miss, 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 miss. It's like, oh, come on. That's kind of like me trying to hit my last shot. There I go, making it about me again, right? Well, I'm comparing it in a funny way. Like, I want to hit my last shot. You know, I hit the three-pointer and then go. You know, like it's, I did my little shoot around, my little practice, and then I want to hit a three as my last shot and then call it a day. And then you miss like 12 in a row or something. It's like, come on, this is cr this is crazy. Because you're thinking too much about something else and it's time to go. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, where Anthony Edwards, same thing, just trying to get from trying to get to 50. And he kept missing. So it was pretty annoying. <laughs> That's funny, Levi. And it's, it's so true. So true. Great, great game by Edwards, nonetheless. 
With that said, wishing all of you a wonderful week. Please uh, call into the show. There is a way to do that very easily with your smart device. It, it's called an audio submission. Open up any free voice recording app on any smart device on the planet. Press the record button. Treat it like a phone call. Save it and then share it slash email it to paladinolive at yahoo.com. Paladinolive at yahoo.com. I was going to convert it into an mp3 file thanks to zumzar.com. Uh, very, very nice to have that web page for converting files. Awesome play page, no doubt about it. Highly recommended. Uh, please write a positive rating for Timberwolves Explosion on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or Audible. Those of you that have in the past, thank you so much. And anybody that's willing to do so, thank you so much also. With that, have a wonderful week, and we'll talk some playoff basketball on the next episode of Timberwolves Explosion.